Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk to you about the latest batch of news for STL on both PC and console. As always, chapters are listed down below. The first thing I want to talk about today is the PC patch that went live on November 9th. Now, this was a pretty large patch for not being a seasonal content release. It ended up being about 2 gigs, and it has now been about 10 to 11 hours since that patch went live and there is still no patch notes posted for it. Patch notes are nice because they let us know, you know, what, what they've went in and changed. Many of the recent patches have had various fixes and changes for ship models and some nice quality of life improvements. So with those types of changes going in, it would be convenient for Cryptic to let us know, you know, what's going on. Thankfully, Players have been going in and checking things out since the patch, and there have been a few very notable changes that people have found that I do want to highlight. And some of these, again, it just doesn't make any sense why Cryptic isn't out there talking about these, because some of the changes that went live in the patch today are pretty significant. The biggest is probably what they did for the ground trays. So for most of the game's life, you could only have up to three uh, three uh, bars here on your ground tray. And there was briefly a workaround that worked for a while until it got nuked a while back, which did let you get a couple extra bars. But just natively in the game, you were limited to three. Now with the patch today, you can now go in and you can increase it up to eight natively in the game without needing to do anything outside of the game. No, no workarounds needed. So all you have to do is go to the top right of your ground tray and you're going to hit the middle of the three buttons to adjust the number of trays and you can now go up to eight. So that is a pretty huge change for those of you that like to do ground things because you'll now have much more room to actually see things that are on your, your tray there. So pretty huge quality of life improvement there. And again, I'm not sure why they you know, don't have a blog out or, you know, the, the, the patch notes up telling us about that huge quality of life improvement there. Another thing that went live with the patch today is that they accidentally added some stuff to the, the mud store a bit early. So for those of you that missed the mirror Gagarin a while back, that is actually in the mud store now, though it looks like it may have been removed, but I think I got a picture of that over on the Discord, so let me pull that up. So yeah, the, the Mirror Universe Gagarin Warship. This is an event ship from a year or two back, and for those of you that missed it, it is going to be coming to the Mud Store soon. It's going to have the base cost of 17,000 Zen, but as with anything in the Mud Store, you never buy it at the base cost. You buy it when it's on a 75% sale, meaning that this ship will be like 4200 zen 4300 zen somewhere right around there with the uh, sale active now there's likely to be a couple other muds items added in if they were in here then cryptic has pulled them since the patch um, but hopefully you know we get like that sylvia's feline charm thing from the prior halloween event a lot of people miss that and that thing is really convenient that sylvia's feline charm it's a bit silly, but you run so much faster when you're in that mode, just running around as the cat. It is honestly a pretty nice quality of life thing. And if you're someone that does a lot of ground content, that might be something worth picking up for, for 20 bucks whenever they do put that into the mud store. Again, I don't know if that's what's going to be added in, added in to the mud store alongside the Mirror Universe Gagarin, but... You know, this is one of the items that I am hoping we see in the mud store sooner rather than later. And for those of you that are fans of the Chimera or Manticore, the Federation Lifetime subscriber exclusive ships, then you'll be happy to know that there is a skin remaster incoming for both versions of the ship. The version for the Chimera went live earlier today on accident. Thomas is currently working on a remaster for the Manticore, and both of those skins were meant to go live at the same time. However, due to an issue with version control for the game, the Chimera remaster did get pushed live a bit early. 
And one of the other things Thomas did mention here is that the original Chimera design was from a fan artist, Jason Lee, and that they did actually go in and hire Jason to remaster the Chimera and bring it up to modern standards and let Jason do what he always wanted to do with that ship design. So you can go in game right now if you have access to the Chimera and you can put this remastered skin on it. Simply go to the tailor and hit Chimera and you'll see the new skin on it. Again, only the Chimera remaster skin is live right now and it does have a, some issues here which I imagine are from it being pushed live a bit early. Um, like these windows being seen through like that is, I imagine, not intended. But it is here for you to play around with if you want to mess around with the ship again. And I do want to quickly mention that this is just a visual remaster for the Federation versions of the Lifetime subscriber ships. It is unclear if the Romulan, KDF, and Jemadar Lifetime subships are also going to be getting a remaster. And there has also been no word on these ships actually getting like a brand new upgraded version that gives them like a full spec seat or something like that. These lifetime subscriber ships are a bit dated at this point. They're from 2015. They've got a 4-3 weapons layout and they only have a lieutenant commander command specialization seat. So... A bit dated by modern standards. Many of the event ships we get are honestly a bit better than this nowadays. So not the best ships. If you don't have them, you're not missing out on a lot. But if you do like flying them, and if you specifically like flying the Federation version of the Lifetime subscriber ship, whether it be the Chimera or Manticore, then you are getting these remastered skins. Again, only the Chimera one is in right now and the manticore one will be in eventually so here's a closer look at it and here it is with the transformation mode from the console really neat effect it's a uh, like a phaser lance type thing i think that you can fire out of this i don't really remember um but it's it's pretty neat and it does look good even with the transformation mode active there so Nice ship. I just, again, wish that there was a uh, a better version of it stats-wise. And here it is going out of that transformation mode. You can see many different parts of it go back into the ship. And when the uh, transformation mode is active, the, the ship just expands in various ways. I'll show you again here quick once this timer ends in a couple seconds. Pretty neat effect. And the next bit of news is that there's a lifetime subscription sale active on all platforms right now. As always, the sale is divided into two parts. The first part of the sale is running from November 9th up through November 11th, and during this time frame you'll be able to get the lifetime subscription at a 50% discount. If you missed that initial sale, then there will be a secondary one running from November 11th up through December 14th in which the lifetime subscription will be 33% off. Personally, I would only ever buy the lifetime sub at that 50% discount, and I would only buy it if you understand what the rewards are and are certain that you're going to benefit from them. I'll have a link to the wiki page in the description down below, and given the, the recent layoff news that's happened and the uncertainty about the game's future, there is undoubtedly many of you hesitant at even the, the idea of picking up the lifetime sub. So if you want to hold off and see how things progress over the next couple of months, see if there's any other news that pops up, then do note that this lifetime sale does happen several times throughout the year. And if they do what they've done in the past couple of years, we're likely going to see another lifetime sale at the beginning of March. So if you want to hold off and just wait and see, then you're not going to have to wait that long for the next lifetime sale to pop up. And with regards to the future of Cryptic, I do have a couple of updates that I want to go over. 
The layoffs were indeed directed at the unreleased projects that Cryptic was working on, but there were a couple of folks on the Stow and Neverwinter teams that do seem to have been hit. For the Stow side of things, it does look like we lost the acting QA lead, but I am not currently aware of anyone else on the Stow team that was directly hit by these layoffs. Those remaining on the unreleased projects that Cryptic was working on, like Bordicus and Al Rivera, have now posted over on LinkedIn that they are open to offers elsewhere, indicating that those unreleased projects from Cryptic likely don't have much of a future ahead of them. And the other bit of news is that with Embracer's restructuring, Cryptic is no longer part of Gearbox Entertainment. Cryptic has been moved over to DECA Games, and the reason for this is likely that Embracer wants to sell Gearbox, but they want to retain Cryptic due to the profitability of Stowe and Neverwinter. So they moved Cryptic over to another company that they own, DECA Games, and now they're probably going to sell Gearbox off. Now, DECA Games is mostly focused on the mobile side of things. They do have one PC game, but their main focus is going in and I think Goss said it best. They're like a nursing home for for these older older games. They keep them alive and they keep them monetized. Now, it's too soon to know exactly what type of impact this move is going to have, but it is important to note that Cryptic alone has about as much staff as all of DECA games, so the most likely outcome is that Cryptic is going to continue to act independently under them, as Cryptic has done with the other publishers they've been under for the past several years. But, of course, time will tell. I've talked about this a bit more on a recent stream, so I'll have that link down below if you want to listen to me talk about this a bit more. And I will also be talking about it here again in the next couple of days on a stream with Triz, Goss, and Mixtu. And if you want to hear what all of us think about it and just hear our conversation, I will make sure to have that linked down below once it actually happens. And I don't know if just Triz is streaming it or if we're all going to stream it. I, I think we're still working that info out. So stay tuned. I think we're looking to do that here on on the on the 12th, I think, November 12th in the evening, I think. So should be an interesting discussion. And I think we all have a few different opinions that we're going to be tossing in there. And the last thing I wanted to mention is that there is going to be a ship announcement on the next 10 forward. And over on Twitter, Kale and Thomas have also been just dropping some teasers, you know, that the anniversary ship is going to be something really interesting. They said that it is something entirely new and that it is not the Harmony from the, the recent story missions and content. So it's not that triangular ship. And I think they also mentioned somewhere that it is not the Assimilator. So it's an entirely new ship, and judging by the quote here of previous anniversary ships might yield a clue, does give me the impression that it might be another one of those Kittimer Alliance type ships. So hopefully it's a Kittimer one, because I know a lot of people were wanting to see that line of ships expanded. Now there is a couple of other ships incoming here, and they've been talked about on some of the recent 10 forwards. Um, Kale said that the ship coming up next month is one that we're going to like, so that's the one that's going to be announced on the next 10 forward. The winner ship is an older ship and a very cool design, so not quite sure what that ship is going to be, but we'll be finding that out here in the next couple of weeks. Um, and even though they, they even though they said the the harmony that triangular shape. Uh, ship is not the anniversary ship. They did comment on a recent 10 forward that it was designed to be player usable, meaning that we are likely going to get that at some point. Maybe that's the, the, the winner ship, but that's not an older ship, so that probably doesn't fit in there. The other ship that they've talked about being potentially playable is the Borg Assimilator. And I'm curious, you know, how would they set that up? 
and how many of you would actually fly the the Borg assimilator? The Borg assimilator, for those of you uh, not familiar with it, it, it's that flat Borg ship that's been introduced in the last month or so. Um, some people say it reminds them of like a, a PlayStation console. So it's it's a flatter ship. Um, not everyone's a fan of it, but that is something that they have stated has a much higher chance of being playable compared to a Borg cube. So if you were setting up and designing, you know, that Borg assimilator, what would you set it up as? I'm curious to see what you guys would want a ship like that to, to be like stats wise. But that's going to be it for today. Again, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. More videos coming soon. See you guys around.